welcome you once again to the Way of Salvation program. And we thank God for the tutorials He's given us. We are learning a lot of things on this program. And I believe you got my message in the last episode that demons are very wise. I want to tell you. Even the Lord Jesus said, those in darkness are wiser than those who are in the light. That was a very sad observation. What the Lord meant was that those who walk in the light of his word are not clever at all. We are not clever. Why? We, we, we don't know God, so we are allowing demons to push us around. That is the observation the Lord made. So as I continue today, you have to understand what I meant in the last episode. Because we don't know who God is, demons have capitalized on that and are causing human beings to find it difficult to believe him. We are finding it extremely difficult. And you see, the coronavirus is my witness. It has come to support what I'm saying that people find it difficult to believe in God. And as I said last time, if even demons were able to push Adam and Eve not to believe in the God they had intimate relationship with, what about those of us in these end times? who don't know or have no idea who God is. So my point is, do your best to know God so that you will not find it difficult to believe him. I said last time that presidents, even some of them are mentioning God in their mouths. If you mention God in your mouth and your directive affect a church, then I'm saying you don't know who God is. If a medical doctor can also give a directive as if he knows better than God who created the virus. By the way, I've been telling you that the virus is a demon. So demons are part of God's creation. They are a part and parcel of those who rebelled. So if you doctor and Mrs. Doctor you say your advice or your measures can stop a demon. The demons are laughing at you. You see that you are struggling and even some of your colleagues are dying. Eh? If, you are, if you are top and your advice can solve the, the situation, why can't you save your colleagues who are dying? It means you are human. You are only human. So don't try to be tough. You know nothing when it comes to spiritual things. That is why sometimes medical doctors cannot understand why someone died. All that you are able to say is that he died of a natural cause. And according to my Bible and what I know, anybody who dies before the stipulated years died as a result of demons. So what I mean is that Demons are causing medical doctors to find it difficult to believe in my God. And I said, the last group of people that are also shocking me are the so-called preachers. They are also finding it difficult to believe in the same Bible they preach from. That is very sad. So today... God said, I should ask you a question. The same three groups, I want to ask you some questions. Number one, Mr. President, Mr. Prime Minister or Governor, whatever, whatever position you may be in, to enact those laws and measures against the church. God says, I should ask you, why did you say people should wear masks in his presence? 
answer that at home. You are sleeping and God wakes you up. Mr. President, wake up. You have been talking about me. I'm not talking about presidents who don't mention God in their, in their mouths. I'm talking about Christian countries and the presidents who profess to know God. When God wakes you up in the middle of the night and asks you this question, why did you say people should wear nose masks in my presence? What will you say? Why did you say they should space themselves in my presence? Any answer you give will come to support my point. If you say, oh God, I, I think you cannot help them and I'm trying to protect them as the doctors directed me. That is why I said, in, even in your presence, they should cover their nose. Then God will say, well, it means I cannot do anything. What you are, according to what you are saying, it means I can't help them. You see, Mr. President, that has caused you to have a problem with God. You don't know him. You have no idea who God is. That is why you have done what you did. If you want to be with God forever, change your directives. Repent, else you will die and go into the hellfire because you are belittling God and say he cannot prevent a virus or a demon he created. Now to the medical doctors, I want to ask the same question. God says as you ask you, Mr. Medical Doctor, Mrs. Medical Doctor, God wakes you up and said, you are telling people to wear nose mask. Tell the, you are telling the president, tell them, if even they go to church, they should do the same thing. The directives affect it should affect everybody in the society and god will ask you why did you tell them to wear nose masks in my presence what will you say uh, uh you see uh, mr god uh, according to the way i studied uh, the human body part you see if we don't cover our nose it will, we, we will be spreading the disease or the virus from person to person. Then God was good. Uh, so I can't, I can't do anything about it. Eh? Uh, you see, I, I think what you are saying is spiritual. But me, you know, I'm a, you know, I'm a science man. And uh, we, we work with facts. We work with what we see. That is why we directed people like that. And God would tell you, I see. So you are making me small. You, I created you. You who are giving such directives, I created you. And you are telling me I cannot stop the virus? Mr. Doctor, you see, you have a problem before God. You have a big problem before God. Unless you also repent. Then the question comes to the last group. You are the one preaching from the Bible. You are the one sweating all the time. My God can do this. My God can do that. In America, they will say, put your hand on the television. Hey, say this verse after me. Put your hand and God will heal you. Where is that God now? Mr. Preacher, where is that God now? You see, the coronavirus has come to expose you that you are preaching from a different God, not my God. I am still standing by my point that my God can prevent the virus from attacking people in his presence. I have stood by my point till now because I know what my God can do. So, Mr. Preacher, God says, as you ask you, why in, in the course of the service? Because even here in Ghana and around the world, some preachers have accepted the, the directives. They have covered their faces with a mask. And they are preaching and, uh, to uh, people uh, who have spaced themselves. So, in the course of the service, then the Holy Spirit descends. Then you ask you, Mr. Preacher, why have you told these people to cover their mouths in my presence? What will you say? What would you say, Mr. Preacher? You see, God, uh, this one, we don't think you can solve this problem. And you see, uh, uh, that is why the president said we should do it. So we have to obey the president. That is why we are doing it. Then God will ask you the second question. You are preaching from my book. In my book, can I prevent the virus or not? That is what God will ask you. And if God asks you this question, any answer you give will make you guilty. 
because you have accepted. What an insult. It is better even to stay at home. You have accepted to go to church and cover your mouth and, and space yourselves. What a shame. It means your God cannot do anything. It is better to stay at home than to obey this directive and come to God, God's presence and display this insult. Let me tell you something. Many people are holding Bible. They are preaching from the Bible. They are talking about God, but they don't know the God they are talking about. I'm telling you, this coronavirus has come to assert that. They don't know what they are talking about. So, let me show you something. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, he said, Now see that I, God is talking here. Wow. Even I, I am He. Hallelujah. I love that. I am He. And there is no God besides me. I am He. When you say God, I am the only one. I kill and I make alive. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Nor is there any who can deliver from my hand. Hallelujah. God is telling humanity that I can kill people who offend me. I can do that. That means all life is with me. If I decide to take my own life, nobody can question me. I am he. I can also say someone should live. I have witnessed many people that doctors, medical doctors declared that they would die. And my God told me, pray for them, they will not die. And they lived. Wherever you are, hearing the sound of my voice, if doctors have declared that you will die. Doctors have declared that you have a strange disease. And you believe in my God and your pastor who is preaching and does not believe in God. Please come to Action Power and you will see whether I am lying or not. Come and see. My God is alive. He's still healing people contrary to the directives and the declarations of medical doctors. God can heal. That's why he's saying that. Then he continued to say that no one, I heal, I wound and I heal. And he said, no one can deliver anybody from my hand. Wow! That is powerful. So that is to show you a little bit attribute of my God. Let me, let me show you another thing in John chapter 11. The book of St. John chapter 11. 11. When Lazarus died and the Lord God Almighty, Jesus was not around. When Jesus got to the scene, Martha was saying that when the Lord said, your brother will rise again, Martha was thinking that Jesus was referring to a future event. He was talking about the rapture. When believers will resurrect. Listen to what the Lord said. In verse 25. Jesus said to her. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me. Though he may die. He shall live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am the resurrection and life. That means. When you combine these two scriptures I read to you. God said, I kill and I can make someone live. Here too, he's saying, I am resurrection and life. So God is life. Therefore, if you agree to come to his presence, no threat of death, no threat of death can operate in his presence. So all ministers, all supposed ministers, who have agreed to cover your faces with masks and space yourselves in the church, it's a shame unto you. You don't know the God you are preaching about. God says, as you ask you again, what answer will you give him? Will you say, Lord, I'm protecting myself. 
from the virus. Then the, then the Lord will ask you again. So I can't do anything for you. That is why you are protecting yourself. Eh, I see. So in my presence, whatever you come to do in my presence is just a joke. Eh, it's just a normal thing, thing you do. You see? People hold Bible and they don't know what God can do. What is the reason? Demons are inducing them to do that. Demons have put fear in people so much so that in this time, they have forgotten their Bible. They have forgotten what God can do. That is why they are behaving like that. You see? But my God can do everything. Listen to what the Lord asked Martha in verse 26 of John chapter 11. Listen to it again. Verse 26 of John chapter 11. He said, And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. That means if you are alive and you believe in almighty God, no virus can kill you. I've told you time and time again in Psalm 91 that he said, we should not be afraid. So he said, if you are alive now and you believe in God Almighty, he said you will not die. Listen to the, the golden question. I love this question. Listen to it. The last sentence of verse 26 of John chapter 11. Listen to what the Lord asked. Do you believe in this? What? <laughs> He asked Mary this question. Mary, you said you believe. You said earlier on that you believed that your brother will rise again. Then the Lord said, okay, that statement referred to the future. But I'm talking about now. Do you believe that your brother can rise up now? So that is the question I'm asking you. Mr. President, who professes to be a Christian. Please, do you believe that God said, if you believe in him, you will not die? Do you, do you believe this? Medical doctor who says you are a Christian. Please, do you believe this statement from God, from the Lord? And Christians, do you all believe that if you believe in God and what he said, that even though you live, if you believe in him, you will not die? That is the question. Wherever you are, I want you to answer this question. You may be on a sick bed, but doctors have given you false hope that you will die. You may be traumatized because of what you are seeing on TV. I'm here to tell you that I carry the message of life. If you believe in my God, you will never die. You will not die. Because Jesus is the resurrection and life. Christianity, as I said in the other episode, is that it's a way of life. And it's a life of life. It's a life of life. You are living a way of life that has to do with life. Hallelujah. So, if you, if you believe that God can give you life, then you need to exercise that faith. You need to exercise that faith. Somebody will say that, oh, you see, the directive came from the president, so we have to obey. Listen, if a directive collides with this, this is the word of God, I will go on the side of this one. I will believe what God says and not what the, med the medical doctor or the president says because I've just proven to you that they are human. They don't know what God can do. If we have to obey every commandment from human, human beings or presidents, then you condemn uh, uh, Azaria and Michelle and Hananiah because Nebuchadnezzar said they should bow to a demon. And the boy said, no way, this is not God. In the same way, I will never succumb. I will never succumb to the point that I should come to church and cover my mouth. I will never do that. If I do that, I as a preacher, I have even belittled God and it will mean that I don't know what I'm preaching about. You see? 
You can tell people who don't know their God to do that. But we as Christians should believe in God Almighty. Stay at home until the law is taken away. Else, you say, I will go and pray. Daniel did the same thing. He said, I will pray. These people cannot tell me I shouldn't pray. All this has to do with the fact that they knew the God they were saving. They were serving. Please, do you know the God you are serving? Demons are pushing you because you don't know him. You are finding it difficult to believe him. And if you find it difficult to believe him, you have sinned against him. You have reduced his potency. I and my children of action power of faith ministries, I see what God does every day. I witness his power all the time. That is why I always encourage you. Know my God. And you will never leave to find it difficult to believe him. Because as I keep telling you that, with God, all things are possible. I will see you again next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you have been enlightened. To hear more, you may subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell to see more videos. Patsu Kukudatsi has written a very informative book called How Demons Operate. Grab yourself a copy to know how they operate and know how to liberate yourself from demonic oppression. To stay in contact with us, you can reach us through these details. God bless you.